Hello, I'm Emily Ernest from the University of Delaware Extension Vegetable and Fruit Research Program. I'd like to share with you some of the work that we do to extend knowledge and change lives. Each year, farmers plant about 10,000 acres of sweet corn in Delaware. About half of those acres are for processing, which means that the corn is either frozen or canned by one of three regional vegetable processing companies. In 2010 and 11, the vegetable program tested more than 30 varieties of sweet corn to identify new varieties that grow well in our area. During this project, farmers and processors asked us about a problem. In Delaware, the first sweet corn is usually planted in early April when cold weather, cold soil, flooding, blowing sand, and pests can all damage the young corn plants. Sometimes the field ends up with many fewer plants than what the farmer and processor were hoping for. In what case should the farmer replant the field? Anecdotal evidence suggested that even fields with very reduced stands could still produce a good yield. We decided to conduct an experiment to answer this and other questions. How much does stand reduction reduce yield? Do different varieties respond differently? Does uneven spacing or big gaps between plants affect how they respond to stand loss? In 2012 and 2013, we did a series of experiments to answer these questions. We planted two trials each year, one in April and the other in May. Each year was slightly different, but we used the same basic procedure for both years. I planned the experiment and made a plot map of where each variety needed to go. Then we counted out the seed for each row and put it in a packet. We put the packets in order ahead of time so we could load them into the planter at the correct time as we go through the field. We used this planter to plant the different varieties in the field in the predetermined pattern. We load the packets into the planter, then push the button to simultaneously drop the seed of all four rows we are planting. We began by planting the plots at a high population density. But after the plants are up, we go back to apply stand reduction treatments. This means pulling up plants so that we get the stand density and placement that we want to test. Each plot in this experiment is three rows wide and 50 feet long. We use only the center row of the plot for data collection. The rows on either side have the same variety and stand reduction treatment as the center row, but their purpose is to buffer the center row against possible effects from the treatment next door. Each treatment in the experiment is repeated in the field four times so that we can use statistical analysis to determine whether there are differences between the treatments. At harvest time, we went into the center row and picked every ear from the plants between the flags that marked the 30-foot harvest section. All the ears from the plot go into one basket. We count the ears as we pick and then weigh the ears from each plot when they are still in the husk. Now it's time to get to work husking and husking and husking. After all the ears are husked and back in their respective baskets, we weigh them again. Now we measure five ears from each plot to determine ear length, diameter, kernel depth, and the number of rows. Now, because this is corn for processing, we are interested in measuring the yield of cut corn too. This is the machine we use to cut the corn off the ears. We cut the corn from each plot and weigh it to determine the yield of cut corn. The last thing we do is to take a sample of the cut corn for moisture analysis. Super sweet corn should be harvested at 75 to 77% moisture, and we want to see if our treatments are affecting the maturity and percent moisture. The sample of cut corn is liquefied in the blender, and then we weigh out a sample of about 20 grams to test the moisture. Because we measure the weight of the foil cup, the weight of the corn puree, and the cup, and the corn after it has been dried overnight in an oven, we can determine how much water was in the original sample and calculate the percent moisture. In 2012, our experiments were designed to determine the effects of variety and stand reduction on yield. We planted five different varieties at five different stand densities. The five varieties we tested were suggested by the regional processors and our varieties grown in Delaware. Farmers typically plant 23,250 plants per acre. We tested a higher population density, 27,900 plants per acre, or 120% of standard density. We also tested three reduced densities, 80%, 60%, and 40%. 
From this experiment, we learned that stand reduction has a greater effect on yield as measured in terms of ears in the husk than it does on yield of cut corn. The highest plant density produced the greatest yield of ears in the husk, with a gradually decreasing yield with decreasing plant density. For cut corn, however, the highest yields were at 80% of the standard population, but statistically there is no difference in cut corn yield except for the 40% of standard population treatment. When we looked at how each variety performed, it became clear that one of the varieties, GSS 2259P, responded differently to stand density than the others. This variety did not have the same ability to compensate for stand loss and produced its highest yields of ears in the husk and cut corn at the highest stand density. For the other varieties, there was no significant reduction in yield until the stand density was reduced to 60% or even 40% of the standard planting density. After presenting the 2012 results, processors asked me how unevenness in plant spacing might affect yield. In 2013, I worked to answer this question. In 2013, we looked at only two varieties, Overland, which compensated well for stand loss in the 2012 experiments, and GSS 2259, which did not. The population density treatments included 100, 80, 60, and 40 percent of standard planting density, with reduced stands achieved either by thinning plants evenly or by adding random gaps by removing either one plant, two plants, four plants, or eight plants. For example, this represents a perfect row of corn. Next we have a row representing 60 percent stand, evenly spaced. These next three rows represent that same 60 percent stand but with ever larger gaps rather than being evenly spaced. We expected that large gaps would reduce the ability of the plants to compensate for stand loss. Surprisingly, gap size did not have a significant effect on yield in the experiments. The green bars show the yield of the evenly spaced stands. The blue gradient bars show increasing gap sizes. There is no statistically significant difference between the green and blue bars. For each stand density, the yields were statistically the same, no matter whether the plants were evenly spaced or had a gap that was more than seven feet long. Based on the results from these experiments, we can advise processors and farmers that most processing sweet corn varieties used in Delaware compensate well for stand reduction, even reduction to 14,000 plants per acre, or about 60% of the standard planting density. Unevenness in the distribution of plants seems unlikely to negatively affect yield, so processors and farmers can estimate yield loss from stand reduction simply by accounting for population density. Farmers and processors are finding this information useful as they decide whether to replant or more likely keep fields with reduced stands.